point, um, in comparison of the main reasons that I have concluded yet again to stay with GitLab. So uh, this is a tough decision. Actually, or I've, I've concluded this before, and I started everybody on GitLab some years ago. When I started Skillstack in 2013, we were all on GitHub, and I read their terms of service, and I had many people who were under, thir- two, under 13, and we, it was clear that they were not going to be able to be on GitHub because the terms of service are rather clear on people under 13 not being allowed to use it. And um, also that um, you're not allowed to share accounts, and they're very explicit in their terms of service on that on GitHub. And so that left me in kind of a, a tough situation because I use GitHub for, for so many things uh, to host source code, and I believe in it for lots of reasons that I'd talk about someplace else. Uh, but because of that, I had to decide whether or not to to you know break their policies, or which I you know didn't want to do, or if I was going to find an alternative. So when GitLab came out, it presented um, an immediately kind of a, a, a met the need in many ways uh, that we'll get into uh, for my need. But beyond that, I, I've come to conclude that it's a much better service. It's far superior to GitHub, and the writing's on the wall on that. GitHub would not have had the fire lit under them that they have had over the last two years, uh, adding all these things that GitLab has had for more than five years. Um, if if it had not become, you know, a really really important competitor, uh, there are many many other providers out there. Um, but particularly one of the interesting ones I just recently found out about um, is something called SourceHut, which is uh, it's not a, it's not production yet, but it's um, it's kind of kind of caters to hackers. Uh, there's no JavaScript on the whole site very clean but it would look really great in links um, and uh, I actually found out about this because of a project called CTERM which is I, I believe the leading um, terminal user interface for Golang applications if you want to make um, those kind of things and they migrated from SourceHut to GitLab and that's part of this story um, in January I had decided that I was done uh, with posting anything public on GitHub and I made that conclusion for all the wrong reasons. Um, I thought that the people I might be mentoring were going to be, um, you know, not served well by not being found because GitHub is where recruiters find people. There's no doubt about that. Um, it was where I felt most public um, libraries in Go and other languages were going to be used. Uh, they were the, they, the first and still the only provider to have sponsorship. So for open source, you can go there and sponsor. GitLab does not still have that. And um, they have a much better social atmosphere. They claim sort of to be the Facebook uh, for developers. Um, and so there was more of a sense of community there because you could see things happening and you can actually follow people on GitHub like you would follow them on Twitter and see what they're doing. And I cannot tell you how many times I have found out about uh, something that has not even been tweeted about yet uh, by just following key developers as they're committing and they're contributing to things. So that's part of being a Prussian technology professional, which I'll just plug that link, uh, skillstack.io slash PTP. Um, uh, with Prussian technology professional is somebody who's aware of what's happening. They have a near clairvoyance about what's coming up and they know what to learn, and they know how to learn it, and they, they, they have the skills to learn things just in time. So based on all of that, I you know, was kind of of the opinion that GitHub was, was, was really the place to be for all things public, and I concluded that uh, if you wanted anything private or if you wanted to run your own uh, service, then you would use GitLab, which is you can't do with GitHub. And, um, and then this last few weeks, um, Eric S. Raymond... Uh, ESR, he was, he was very famous in the open source community for his book, The Cathedral and the Bazaar, uh, was very vocal on the Go news group uh, regarding um, Go and the, it being somewhat attacked by Discord. Um, and I noted that he was on GitLab. Uh, I, I then also noted that all of the web pages and source and stuff for Mint are on GitLab. And I ran into the C-Term group that was on GitLab, which is a library, which was really notable to me because that meant that a very, very substantial group of developers had decided GitLab was their home for their software, even though that it meant import dependencies would depend on a GitLab path, a GitLab URL. And to me, that 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 really was the tipping point. And I said, 
what am I thinking here? Why am I porting all my stuff over to GitHub out of some, you know, concern about get all the things that I just said? And so, based on that, I decided to uh, change my tune and to to just reevaluate it yet again. And I found my old documents comparing the two. And I've been very, very vocal on Twitter. I've even, you know, um, Sid has been very kind in responding to a lot of my tweets, the CEO over there at GitLab. And I absolutely love that company. I don't think there's another company I would rather work for more right now. Uh, I'm not in a position to do that. I'm really busy. But if but if I were a young person and I wanted to work for a really fast-moving company that's making all kinds of differences in the world, uh, that would be a company that I would really work for. And I could not say the same for GitHub, which, of course, was bought for seven point was it $2 billion by Microsoft. And I think 2000, I want to say 16 or 17. Um, and so maybe it's 2015. And so, by the way, when that happened, GitLab became really uh, in view because everybody was really concerned with what would happen if Microsoft got a hold of it. Um, today's Microsoft is not the Microsoft of the 90s by, by any means. In fact, I really applaud them for a lot of the stuff they're doing. But um, still, it was, it was, there was a concern. GitHub is, is proprietary. Uh, it's closed source, and now it's owned by Microsoft. What are they going to do with this? Uh, in the process, they also bought all of the rights to VS Code. So even though you know VS Code was an open source project, it did come out of GitHub. And it was built on Electron, which was also built at GitHub, as was the Atom editor. So uh, that put a lot of power in Microsoft's hands. I got to say, that was really brilliant. Whoever made that decision to buy GitHub was a very wise business person. Um, But that left GitLab as the only alternative for someone who wanted a fully open source um, system. One that had you know thousands of contributors. I think they were up to four thousand on one time, who are actively committing to GitLab's core software. And that is really the fundamental distinction between GitLab and GitHub. Uh, the other distinctions are are important, uh, particularly for you as an individual if you're a developer. But but the the really big big difference between GitLab and GitHub at the business level is how they're positioned and their their general view of the world. Um, and so we're going to talk a little bit about that as we get to go through these points. Um, I'm going to, I'm not going to be particularly entertaining going through these. I apologize. This is kind of like, just get the information out there. So, and then I will be taking questions on stream after this. And just to make a plug, uh, rwxrob.live. That's our, that's my YouTube channel. Uh, there's links there to our Twitch and to um, uh, websites and all that. Come on in and, and talk to us anytime. This will be a video on YouTube. It's likely you'll find it there. But I, I always um, have sort of a live studio audience when I'm doing my, my things. I have to I have to kind of turn them off for a bit because I know they'd be trolling me right now. Um, but um, but we'll come back and we'll, we'll take some questions from them afterwards. So let's get to it. Uh, we got a lot to cover, but I'm going to try to go as quickly as I can. So MIT Open Source License, as I mentioned, if you don't know what that means, that means that anybody can use GitLab any way, anytime, anyhow, however they want, and they can even sell it. Uh, MIT is, is one of, if not the most uh, permissive open source license there is, which means that um, you know anybody can use it. You could even take GitLab, rebrand it, and sell it. And if you don't believe me, just ask Steve Jobs. That's what he did with BSD, which was released under a similar license called FreeBSD. And that's how we have the Macs that we have today. So this is very, very, very appealing to businesses. And this is uh, the beginning of where we can make a really strong distinction between these two. GitLab, from the beginning, chose to target uh, not just the open source community, but also businesses who want it, would want to bring their software in-house and pay them for extra services on top of that. And I believe I talk about it later down here. Uh, here it is. Um, uh, this idea of, of having a completely open business, uh, but uh, selling extra services on the side, they have coined the term open core, an open core business model. And that comes up a lot. Um, uh so, so they have really championed this this idea of enterprise adoption, which puts them in a, a very good position uh, financially, I believe, um, because they they are catering to to businesses, but also they are, that makes their software available to schools and to tiny commun- mentored communities. In fact, 
I was able to get a version of GitLab running here that I was able to allow students as young or mentors, people as young as nine um, to use without a problem. And with, I mean, you know, there was some performance issues because I had, I didn't have a big hardware and there's a Postgres database required. But the idea is, is that if you want to make a GitLab of your own, you can do it and you can expand it. You can build on it however you want. And that is a really significant difference. In fact, I believe that is the primary reason that, that open source uh, champions like ESR, Eric S. Raymond, or, um, you know, the entire GNOME project or the entire Mint project are going with GitLab as opposed to GitHub. GitHub is all closed and proprietary uh, and nobody knows what's going on under the hood. Uh, they, sometimes they talk about it, but for the most part, we don't know. All right, so next thing. Uh, GitLab accepts, as I mentioned, many, many community contributions. Uh, GitHub does not. Uh, GitLab has a full continuous integration, continu um, continuous development, um, DevOps cycle tool chain, they call it. And this is actually their primary marketing. They market a lot on that. Um, they were doing this before anybody else. Um, so they, the GitHub, people were doing it through GitHub, but they were putting J J Jenkins and all kinds of things and they were linking things together. But, but GitLab from the beginning has been able to do that and they have a very tight container integration with the whole system. So they are much better prepared to deal with the world of DevOps and containers. And in fact, you can do rather involved and complex uh, building um, by scripting it, essentially, uh, during your commit. So when something commits to the system, you can have it run through a number of tests, and you can even have it call webhooks and trigger other events. And they were the first to do that. GitHub did not have that. And now GitHub does. I wonder why. So, in fact, they just added it last year. They're called Actions. But these guys have been doing it a lot longer than them. And so now GitHub's playing catch-up. They're, playing, they're doing a good job playing catch-up, but they're playing catch-up. Uh, GitLab, as I said, everything is free. Uh, that they, this is something from the beginning. Uh, your user account is free. Your group is free. Group is, uh, GitHub's word for that is an organization. Uh, you can have subdirectories and everything. Everything on GitLab is free. If you want the, the other services, or and including downloading the software and running for yourself, they make their money by selling extra services or by catering to the enterprise and, and selling support services. So, and that's an oversimplification, of course, but that's what it is. GitHub, uh, for the longest time, and, and I believe they've actually hurt our world this way, GitHub for the longest time has made organizations expensive for most individual developers. And therefore, what you find is that people have been using their free personal accounts to create packages that should never have been associated with a single person. And I believe strongly that GitHub has single-handedly, because of this, promoted the use of individuals' names in their in core packages that are used all over the internet. And they will eventually grant an organization, but you have to, you know, ask for it and you have to there's like a process for it and you gotta hope that you get it and that you don't, you know, violate that. And it's annoying. I mean it's just super annoying. And if you uh, want other people to be in the organization, there's it's also not free. They have to pay um, so in GitLab, everything is just free. The groups are free. They have, you know, you can have, they have better permissions in organizing the groups and what they can do. Um, so the, GitHub doesn't even, can't even hold a candle to GitLab on that part. And it, it's really clear that GitLab saw that was a problem and said, hey, we're going to do this right. Uh, GitLab can be installed at home or on a site. As I mentioned, you cannot install GitHub. Uh, GitLab, as I say here, is more likely to be something you would use on the job, uh, mostly because there a lot of enterprises do deploy GitLab. There, there. To be fair, GitHub does have an enterprise offering. Uh, that for a very long time, you could not. You had to use their sort of VPN or whatever to use them, and you could not deploy GitHub on site inside the, the enterprise. But that is now something that they're doing. I don't know if that was a response to GitLab or not. Um, I could be incorrect on that detail, but but I do know that GitLab has always been able to do that. And again, GitHub is playing catch up on that front. Um, GitLab is more likely to be used on the job. GitHub is more likely for you to use for hobbies because there's this, like the social atmosphere going on. Uh, Git GitLab, by the way, had statuses long, the individual developer statuses long before GitHub had it. And GitHub added that. So um, 
Okay, GitLab uses containerized project repos. That means so every repo is a separate container. Uh, and GitHub, we, they there are less secure repos that share the same resources. Uh, I don't know if this has changed, but the last time I read about this, this is, is there. You do not know the extent to which your container, your private container, is living, you know, on disk space next to another one, and to what degree of security separates the two. And that is largely not something you can just ask them. Yeah, this you can actually GitLab, you can study it, you can know it very directly. Um, uh, GitLab has an agile process, progressive architecture. Uh, I true, truly agree with that. Uh, they are using a lot of new things. I think they're making a lot of decisions correctly, including fundamentally building on Docker and other containers. Um, and I really believe that might have been the motivation to do GitLab in the first place. Uh, GitHub had clearly accrued a lot of technical debt um, over the over the years from their choice of using Ruby and, and whatever else that they built it on way back, you know, in early 2000. And and there's just no ripping that out. I mean, that stuff is there. It's been there forever. Uh, it was really well done for the time. Don't get me wrong, but but it's you know it's it's not a thing anymore. It's just you know this maintenance mode. And so GitLab had the had the fresh opportunity to build everything from scratch, and they built it on top of the whole containerizing thing, which is a big deal. Uh, that also meant, you know, other small things like using, um, when well, we're going to get to that. So here, new repos push with git push. It's a tiny little detail, but it's a super big one. Uh, when you git push with GitLab, it automatically senses that you have a git push and it will automatically create a new private repo for the you automatically. It doesn't, I said that twice, but, um, and, and over here you have to do, it's very annoying actually, you have to go to GitHub and unless you're using some sort of tool with the API, which is relatively easy to use, you can do it in a few lines of bash code. But but you if otherwise you have to go to the website, you have to create the repo, and then you can pull down the repo. But in GitLab, you can just make a repo, do git init, and then git push. And if you do it properly, GitLab will automatically make it for you, and you don't even have to touch the website. So it's those kind of kind of tiny little details that make a really big difference. Um, you can tell that they've given a lot of attention to these to the workflow of developer, to including the, the GUI. Um, uh, GitLab has a very powerful import, export, and mirroring um, uh, service uh, integration, including uh, being able to export and import Git T and um, other other providers of, of Git. Um, uh, they you can mirror, in other words, you can both pull and push to GitHub. So if you set your key up token upright with GitHub, when you publish something to GitLab, it, can, it will automatically replicate and mirror to GitHub. So if you have some code or something that you just would really like to have visibility uh, on GitHub, you can do that. I don't recommend you do that with a library of any by any means, because the library then now has two, you know, sort of places to get it, and it's probably better to have one authoritative source for that, particularly with all the, the caching that's going on with, with modules and, and stuff now. I'm thinking particularly of the, uh, specifically of the Go, uh, the new the Go caching modules and stuff. So there is no mirroring on GitHub whatsoever unless you code it up, which you can do. Um, I really love GitLab's cleaner view-based interface. Uh, most of their front end is view. Uh, GitHub's is pretty ancient bootstrap, and I think it's still that way. Um, GitLab's groups and projects get icons, including animated GIFs. I know that's a small thing, but that's a pretty big deal. Um, I mean, this is this is a small detail that I got to tell you is very valuable. Let me let me just give you an example. I mean, if I if I go to uh, GitLab.com and I just pull up Skillstack slash comp, this is this is a defunct directory, but I still oh, I think I deleted it already. Oh. Um, and what I'm trying to show you though is that you can you can see the icons. And um, you see here, you can name the icons, um, and you can you can organize them in different ways. So this one, I, I believe, I hope these are still here. So here you go. So you see how we have some icons here. You can make some fun little icons, and I don't know if you also noticed, but we're going to talk about this in a second. But you can create subgroups, and not only for better organization of the content in general, um, but and I have I have um, Dark Reader on this way, so I can't read some of them, but. Um, but not only does it give you better organization of your repos, which we, which they call projects, but it gives you um, the ability to very granularly uh, set permissions. So you can have, and they have three permissions modes, not just you know admin and not. They have like a reviewer permission, which is somebody who can read and, and deal with all the documentation, but doesn't have access to the source code to be able to change it. Uh, both GitHub and GitHub do have um, GPG signing for when you do commits, so you can make sure that they are actually are coming from somebody who is trusted. So 
that's something not really they both they both have that uh you don't get any icon at all on github except for users and this this continues to be something that's very annoying um uh, to, to think of it though github does have a better way i believe to to add a marker for when you want to post your thing to you can customize that it may be that github lab has that i haven't found that yet but i just that just occurred to me you can set up a way for your repo to show up nicely on Twitter or Facebook or something. And you can actually customize how that appears. All right. Next, um, there's a very, very, very powerful web IDE built into um, to GitLab. And that means that you can go in and you can change what's happening uh, with the editor. So not only do they have the old school editor, so let's say I want to edit this readme file, which it says I just... Okay, so if I were to edit the README file, I can click on the README file, and I have two options here. On GitHub, you only have the one, and I can click on the fast editor, which is just kind of in, in line here uh, with, with uh, syntax highlighting, which I found to be far more, uh, and I was, this was confirmed by a friend of ours on the stream, um, the syntax highlighting is, is far more clued in on GitLab than GitHub has been. Um, so you can do your editing right here and click commit and just have it. In fact, it's so efficient to do that that I often introduce web development uh, combining GitLab with a service called Netlify, which we'll talk about in another stream, uh, where you can, you know, you can publish uh, directly. And so we go through, I don't know, like Jen's um, web design book and we work on it and we don't even need to, inter you know, into, to introduce uh, VS Code or, or any of those things just yet. So the reason I like that is because even though they are de becoming dependent and it's rather slow to, you know, to edit files here, um, it's still a possibility and it allows them to know that they can do that anytime from school or wherever they are. Uh, but there's another thing here. There's a thing called a web ID. There's a little gotcha with this uh, that they actually recently changed. I wish they hadn't, uh, but that I'll tell you about. But other than that, you have a full-blown VS Code-like IDE, and this is actually you can actually change. You can customize the view of your IDE and your editor in GitLab, which you cannot do in GitHub. So if you don't depend on a reader and you just want to have sort of a, a VS Code color scheme of some kind, you can do that. You can change that. It's also not on GitHub. Um, so you can do all of these things here, but when you want, and you can actually drag files into here. You can click upload and you can put a file into there at any time. Line is you have a web editor that you can use to, to change things up in there. I'll probably cut all that out. <laughs> but you can use, it, it, it's just an uploader. Okay, and so you can do that. You can do the editor. I don't want to waste more time on that, you guys. So, um, and I mentioned already, uh, GitLab is a private company. Uh, GitHub is owned and operated by Microsoft, uh, even though Microsoft is making great strides in its adoption of open source. Um, so I'm proud to see them doing that. Uh, open core business model, I talked about that. Uh, they do everything very, uh, with the idea of it being open source first and then deciding what of that they're going to make money on later um, by adding extra stuff. I believe they coined that term. Uh, GitHub is more of a traditional closed business model. Uh, now we get into some of the business differences. Um, uh, GitHub, GitLab is 100% transparent to the point where it, they actually make fun of it in the community sometimes. Uh, they literally publish everything. Their financials, uh, I believe even their salaries, although I've never seen that. Um, all of their meetings, all of their internal notes, there's no secrets in this company as far as I can tell. Now that... That that I don't know them that well, and I'm not a, an insider with that company, but but I can tell you they have been really really transparent, um, and they're you know occasionally they get taken to task. So for example, uh, their code of conduct, they had some stuff in there where they they decided to say, hey, uh, it's not our business whether you use our service for whatever you use it for, and they got really raked over the coals um, because you know the 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 culture of the uh, of this moment is that. Um, you know, you should step in and not allow certain people to use your service because we disagree with what they believe in. And, you know, I'm not, I don't want to make this a philosophical debate, philosophical debate, but they chose to say we are neutral and we provide a service. And they're not the first. I mean, Google's very famously done that, but they've also cr created some... It's a big, big topic. I don't want to get into that. But when they did that, they decided to say, okay, maybe we got the wording here wrong. And, and so they were very forthright with it, you know. Uh, and GitHub, on the other hand, has had zero corporate transparency, um, and 
and I'm going to jump ahead here, and that's been pretty scary because there's been several uh, sexual harassment scandals over there, um, and uh, one of for for which, and I I I I don't want to comment on this because I've actually uh, worked a little bit on a project with some of the people that were involved, not personally, but. Um, but some of the people that were involved had, were, were forced to step down. We don't know the situation as to why they stepped down, but they did. And, and the company, has, and GitHub, was, was nearly in bankruptcy when Microsoft bought them. I mean, that's no secret. So, um, I mean, it was really struggling, and then it, it kind of came back, right? And, um, and GitHub, GitLab, other than the, other than the thing with um, you know, them, their code of conduct, which they tried to do as best as they could, is a very tough topic, They've had a pretty clean business history, as far as I know. But somebody knows anything different than that, I'd love to know. Um, but in both cases, you know, I just, I just, I, I just really feel closer to the GitLab community better. I feel like it's the kind of company that I would want to work for. Um, something that we skipped here is really, really, really important. Uh, Git GitLab promotes a work from home environment. Uh, I won't link it to the video, uh, but I strongly recommend you take a moment to go link it to their recruiting video where they actually show them in, I believe it's Greece or Monaco, and they're having one of their, their, their all hands where they get together. And it's remarkable. I mean, they, they're, they promote a very, very work from home. Oh boy, sorry for that. They promote a very, very work from home sort of situation. And so GitLab, GitLab has had uh, a very strong re remote work from home kind of thing. And they employ people all over the world, which is another point of controversy, because what do you pay them, right? Do you pay them all the salary for their country? or, And so because of these rather difficult challenges which they are taking on, they have been the subject of a Harvard Business Review, which is looking at them, I believe, as a model for how more enterprises are going to work going forward. The idea that you have to go you know, work inside of a hermetically sealed happy town as Silicon Valley folks fun at Google, uh, is kind of fading. You know, the idea, it's not sustainable, first of all. And, you know, it's being in person is definitely value to that. But but our our worldwide workplace is going to demand that we figure out how to work remote. And I worked 10 years from IBM remote, went in the office five times or so. And so I believe that GitLab as a company has a, more of a clue than GitHub. Now, there are a lot of people that work remote at GitHub, from what I understand and obviously from what you read on Twitter and stuff, but they are still, you know, they have very much, they have very much a center you can go visit and everything. And um, so here's the real big one. GitHub, obviously, since it was the first to do this, has, you know, 10 million or so legacy users as of 2019, when there's like 800,000 users on GitLab. So, uh, but I want to make a note here. I used to think that this was enough reason to stay, to keep all your public stuff on GitLab, I mean GitHub. And I no longer do, because what I'm finding, and, and this is my impression, is that the users who are on GitLab are higher quality users. And I know that's going to get all kinds of hate from people, but I find when the people that I run into are more informed they're making a much more informed decision and frankly they're making decisions that are based on reasons other than well what is everybody using and so they're they're choosing it based on many of the reasons that i've outlined here and i find that uh, very refreshing that's something that i at some point i actually want to you know i want to emulate and, and i found myself giving into the pressure like well all the recruiters are getting people off of github because that's where all the talent is well you know what if they don't if if your recruiter it's gonna if, if you need to have a recruiter find your stuff on GitHub to get a job, you have bigger problems. <laughs> you know, I mean, really, you got you got bigger problems, right? You should be you should be documenting why you feel like your 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 stuff is better because it's on GitLab, and you should be able to justify the reason and very articulately describe. Well, oh yeah, right, yeah, mm -hmm, GitHub, yeah. How about their CICD? Can you do this and this and this? Well, they have actions. Okay. Well, how about this? Can they do this? You know, if if you are more able to defend your position on GitLab when you do encounter someone who's going to hire you, they're. I frankly, I feel they're going to be more inclined to hire you because they're going to say, "Wow, this guy really understands the differences, and he's really like thinking about all the all the angles here. He's not just using what everybody uses because that's what everybody uses." And and then I have kind of a fun little thing. I actually really like the Fox logo, especially the animated one. And the Octocat, gotta tell you, I've never understood it. <laughs> it's cute. You know, they dress it up in all kinds of different ways. I'm like, what is this thing? And I know it's probably based on like an anime. It was made by the same guy, apparently, who made 
of the Twitter logo, and you just say, oh, this would be a cool logo. But, I mean, the Fox logo is just so much cleaner. If, to me, the Fox logo, it really, really kind of just is just kind of icing on the cake. It really says, we are serious, we're about business, we have a great logo, and, you know, we're just, we're fun, too, and we're kind of sneaky. So, uh, I know I, it's like overanalyzing all this stuff. Like, are you analyzing logos at the end? Yeah, well, whatever. You know, it's just a fun thing to talk about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video there, and I'll probably have to clip it quite a bit. Um, I realize this is an extremely controversial topic. Uh, I am not afraid of controversy, and I'm not afraid of heated debate, and as long as it remains respectful. So, if you have any reasons to, to disagree with what I have to say here, uh, I'd, I'd rather not bring anyone else in the conversations and, and you know, other, other sources, um, other source host providers. I would, and there's, you know, there's, there's strong argument against not using one of these services at all, right? Why don't you put it on, on, uh, you know, your own system or Nextcloud or, or get to your, or, you know, anything that you can run on your own, on your own site. And or not just plain old Git repos, right? Um, I'd rather not discuss that right now. Really, right now, I want to make a decision between one of these two mainstream providers. And if anybody has any new information that I haven't that I haven't covered here, I'd be happy to talk about that. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and end the video now. And uh, but I, I I will be adding some comments, um, t taking some comments and and looking at the chat now. And uh, uh, that I, I will leave that in the video, but it's going to be much less formal from here on out. So if you'd like to check out. Um, Come on and say hi to us. Otherwise, uh, I'm going to turn to the chat now. And let's see what y'all got to say. <laughs> You're full of it. All right. So going up here, I'm going to scroll back a little bit. Apart from government things. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> well, I'm sold. <laughs> I know. You know, I had to put that one in there for fun scream. Okay, so let's see. Um, let's see. No, per oh yeah, no, no perforce. No, no, that's another provider. Uh, if you're serious about pen test, okay, that's another thing. Uh, okay, nice background. Let me see if I, I wish I could figure out a way to scroll a little bit easier in hex chat. Uh, I like GitLab, but I think GitHub is better for discoverability. That's that's the common perception. And I completely agree with that. I, if you want to be discovered, then you're going to be discovered through GitHub. If that's your, if your greatest fear, right? I mean, <laughs> if that's what you're working on. But I'm, I, I've, I've seen so many really capable technologists just thumb their nose at that fear, that I want to be them. <laughs> I'm not. I don't. I don't care about discoverability as much as I can, uh, because there's other ways to be discovered besides GitHub. To me, uh, the main appeal for me initially for GitLab. Uh, were the free private repos, but GitHub has them now too. Well, yeah, they only have them because they had the pressure. And by the way, they're not free. Um, if you, they have it for private for you, your organization still has to pay. And so if you want, they still are promoting the use of private individual repos for everything, which I really disagree with. I think that had GitHub from the beginning been more open and allowed free repos for organizations rather than using that as part of their business money, their, their monetization, that we would have been much better off because people would have organized repos based on organizations and it would have put names in them properly. And now we're all locked into, you know, so-and-so's, you know, library. And I, so I actually strongly disagree that they're free because they're only free for private individuals. They're not free for organizations. And that's a big deal. And by the way, their cost is pretty hefty. And I was subscribed. To full disclosure, I was a subscriber. Uh, I paid my seven bucks a month for at least. In fact, I just turned it off two days ago. I must have paid it for Cal, what six years, seven years, because I wanted private repos. And you know, GitHub had them all along. So uh, let's see. Uh, problem with GitHub is that is the fact that Microsoft owns it. Uh, big corporate interests are antith antithetical to FOSS, the free open and source software. I completely agree with that. Uh, a lot of people don't need any other reason besides that. Uh, I can't, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked how many people, when they find out GitLab is open source, decision is made. They could care less about some of the other advantages. And, and I am more along that line now all the time. Uh, all right, so today's Microsoft is, is almost worse. I don't know if today's Microsoft is worse or not. I I would love to hear the the reason for that conclusion. Scream! I think Microsoft's um, embracing of Linux and some of the stuff that they're doing um, is actually better for the industry. But there's other things they might be doing that are not as good. Um, 
so I don't know what those things are, but but what they're they, they're they're embracing open source, and I don't believe it's like embrace whatever destroy. Um, it's often embraced destroy. I don't think that's the thing that they're doing. I I don't believe that. All right. I wouldn't be surprised if they're data mining the code so AI can do suggestions to write the code. I, I'm not surprised of that either. In fact, I would strongly think that they are doing that. Uh, there is, there, there's probably something in their terms of service that allows them to do that. And that level of connection with the developer base is huge. And if you look at, you know, the, the race for the future is, is, you know, quantum and cloud and AI. And then, you know, if you've got, if you literally have everyone's source code, you're already at an advantage. And and I don't, I'm not comfortable with any company having that. I want to be able to move my stuff off if I need to. And you can do that with Git and GitHub. You can take it off any time. But if I have a package that, you know, thousands of people are dependent on, I would rather go with the service where, um, I mean, if it's public, it's getting mined anyway. I mean, and that, it, that's, a, that's a given, right? I know for a fact that there are services that are not publicly known. Um, actually, I, I can't disclose who, but I had a parent who works at, a, at the upper level uh, with uh, an organization that regularly AI mines all of the data and all of the users on GitHub and provides a list of the top picks uh, for recruiting. So I know that that exists because I've, I've heard somebody talk about it and they, 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 these, this particular company sounded like they are very uh, picky with who they approach about who they sell that information to. Um, and they don't make it widely public. So I've had two other recruiters who are parents, uh, technical recruiters, uh, say with great enthusiasm, oh, we recruit off GitHub. So, so you know, the discoverability thing is a thing. Uh, but I, I believe that, that it shouldn't be the only thing. And I also think it's, it's actually one of the smaller reasons to use it, in my opinion. So the code, the code on GitHub... Um, the code on, let's see. They are stupid if they aren't. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, yeah, they're stupid if they're not aren't mining it. I would think they would be. They paid a lot of money for it. Uh, I'm happy GitLab did a 180 on the telemetry stuff they were pushing. Yes, yes. Oh, thank you, M10, for telling me about that. I totally forgot about that. They were tracking telemetry for a while, and they yes, because people hate being monitored without without a consent. Yep. Yes. Thank you so much for telling me about that. But again, that's another case. I, I've forgotten about that. I remember hearing about that. I remember thinking, wow, that, well, they listen to the community. And this is the thing about GitLab. They really, really listen. I get the impression GitHub does not listen. The only thing GitHub listens to is competition and money. And there's, I mean, there, there's good people working there. Don't get me wrong. I've, I work particularly, there's a lot of good people in the education center. And, and I don't believe GitLab has an education um, department. Um, GitHub does. And I worked with them for quite a long time, actually. Um, and, and so there's good people over there with good intent. Um, but yeah, uh, let's see. And of course they are because of IntelliSense things, right? Okay. Rob, Rob only thinks of us as trolls. <laughs> me chat, me troll. <laughs> no, uh, better users versus legacy users. Um, yeah, you're laughing at that one. Um, I knew I was going to be, you know, beat up over that one. Um, that's been my experience. And I, uh, I, I use the comparison a lot to uh, the .io domain in probably 2012, 2013. When the .io came in, domain came out and you had to pay like 500 bucks a year to get one, um, there were like Wired articles on how awesome it was and <laughs> to just go through all of the .io domains. This was way before Agario and all of that. And it was true. Um, the IO domain and the people who knew about it and the people who used it were cream of the crop. I mean, there were some great applications. They were either full-blown applications that were finished or they were coming up. And so there was this this cultural attraction by a particular type of technologist to, for the IO domain. And when I discovered that, I was like, no, man, I don't care how much it costs. I'm, I'm getting a skill stack that IO domain. And, and that was the end of it. Of course, the price came down to like 30, 40 bucks a year. Um, and, you know, there's all the domains in the world now out there. But my, the point of, of that story is that they, the users, uh, when, when you sense, and over time you can start to develop a sense of this, when, when you're following enough people, you can kind of get a sense of, 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 of what the really clued in people are thinking is cool and what they're doing and what they're not telling anybody that they're doing. They're just doing it. And so, you know, that's why I use the example of Eric S. Raymond using GitLab. 
you know, when I've, and you know, by the way, one of the ways to get to, to follow this kind of thing is to go to places where you're not going to find uh, them and, uh, yeah, or, or go to places where you will find them as opposed to like Reddit. <laughs> you know, there's good people there too, but, but there's, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's better sources for that. So my sense of it is that I kept finding these really, really supremely awesome developer teams and they were choosing to use GitLab. And by the way, some of y'all are, you might even be on my stream. I mean, I've had, I've had a few people on my stream who I discovered were using GitLab and after already having met them and looked at their, you know, kind of gotten to know their capacity, I was like, oh my God, this person actually knows about GitLab and is using it and wouldn't dream of using GitHub. And so it, it is a little bit of a popularity thing. It's like, do I want to be one of the cool kids or not? You know what I mean? I, I don't mean cool. I mean, do I want to be one of the clued in kids or not? And and so that's why I'm doing this because I feel like I feel like I owe everybody an apology since January when I've been pushing everybody over back to GitHub here in my community saying, well, we got to have kind of both of them. We need this for private and enterprise, but we also need to, for discoverability, like MTAM says, for discoverability, we need to put all our public stuff on GitHub. And that was my line in the sand. That was my policy in January. And that was a change because I had been GitLab all that time. And I, I ported like 50, you guys have seen me, I ported 50 repos over and I'm like, I'm like, God damn. And then, and then this happens this week, and I was super conflicted. I was like, I think I might have made a mistake. I think I might have overreacted in January. And so I've given it a lot of reflection, and whenever I do that, I try to share it so that, you know, y'all can take me to task over it or maybe benefit from it. Um, so that's why. And then there's the fun one, the nice animated Fox logo <laughs> versus the lame Octocat logo. Yeah, and that's just fun. I mean, they're both cute. There's a lot of talent involved with both of them. Uh, platform governance things, yes. Uh, individual names give vanity benefits. Yes, they do. Uh, I think the individual names thing was, uh, well, I actually reconsidered that because of the discoverability thing. I was like, man, I made some pretty cool stuff here. Why isn't my stuff getting pulled up, blah, 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 blah. You know, why don't I have, it's because I had, I had been done the right thing and I had organized them properly. And so now I have like, on even on GitHub, I have like, what, nine organizations? And, you know, and I have like, like five or six organizations on on GitLab, my initial reaction is to create an organization for something and put everything under the organization because I just feel like that has more sustainability. Um, and that was a mistake in some sense because I did it a lot. I overdid it. There's some things that I, I now am okay with just owning straight up and just saying, yeah, this is my library. Uh, if you want to use it, you know, use my library. But um, I'm, I was overly concerned with with usability long term, and I think my years at IBM kind of, kind of burned that into my brain. So, um, I don't have any public repos because I have OCD when it comes to my creations. Well, I would I will tell you what. Um, so like probably ninety percent of my stuff is private, and you know it's like always like build that repo, especially when you have an API that does it. And then, uh, in fact, I'm going through a massive cleanup right now. Um, and it's it's painful, but it needs to be done. I mean, there's people like Sidney Sorhas who one of the he's got thousands of repos. He's fully supported by his open source contributions. I can't imagine him trying to change his stuff over. He's an npm guy, a Node guy. I don't want to ruin my reputation with unpolished code. Yeah, me too. I am I am so. I mean, I am that way now. <laughs> you gotta understand too. Private repos cost money. So for the first three years here. Anybody who was old enough who had a, a repo was also putting out Hello World. And I look back and think about that. I look back at that now, and if you combine that with discoverability, I'm like, oh my God. In fact, some of them are old and they're about to go to college now. And I'm like, clean up your repos, clean up your repos, because it's all a bunch of random Hello World story games in Python. I'm like, no, dude, this is your profile. And because that was created before there were private repos, there's a bunch of leftover stuff there because we don't ever clean up just like our closet or something. So, you know, um, you know, so I'm taking the opportunity to do this. The one thing you really should take into account is that anything that you publish that's public is going to reflect on you and going to become a part of your professional portfolio. So like M, you should publish it as private. The problem is, is you don't ever get back to polishing it to make it. So as developers, we all need to take a few projects and finish them. <laughs> I'm speaking to myself. Finish those projects before you move on to the next one. Finish one. <laughs> Get it to a point where it's released and then work on something else. Don't start a thousand projects and buy 
200 domain names. <laughs> I'm kind of describing myself here. And not finish all of them, you know, have a million things working in the pot. You know, I, by the way, to be fair, that's how artists work. That's how my wife works. She's working on like 20, 20 art pieces all at the same time. So, um, but, you know, so we got to start focus on finishing. Um, learn from me and start hating your, your own skills so much. The public scorn is very real. <laughs> Code exhibitionism. Uh, just kidding. I'm not that bad. I'm, I'm sure. No, dude, you've already corrected how many times by regular expressions. I'm impressed. Uh, I write a lot of code, but it's just for myself unless I'm helping someone else. Yeah. And, and me too. And that's one of the reasons I like, uh, repo. I, it's one of the reasons too, that I really like GitLab because I can just make a directory and do Git push and boom, I got a repo done. Don't even have, to, it's already defaulted to private. It's already created. As long as my keys are set up properly, I have a repo. I don't even have to touch the website. What's your GitHub? My GitHub is rwxrob, and my GitLab is rwxrob. So, uh, it's in a contact person. You have the video. Polarami said, "I got to keep up with coding skills," and I nearly said, "Well, sub to a Serbic then." Yeah, yeah. He's keeping up. No, I'm asking you guys on stream, not Rob. Rob can't see our text. <laughs> okay, GitLab have dark themes for code blocks. They do. Yep. That feature alone is enough for me. <laughs> yep. That's enough for Raritan too. He's, I don't know if he's on tonight, but that's one of his big things. Marshall too. We have, we have another, another person here who's like, I ain't use it because he hates, he likes dark mode for his editor over there. Um, let's see. Uh, Bob has sent a link. Oh, he sent links to my GitLab and stuff. Appreciate that. Um, oh, well, PayPal even. Yeah. I, I have not gotten anything on that yet. Um, Wait, I didn't. I didn't mean the kappa invalidated. Okay. Um. With my streaming frequency, is fair. Let's see what operating system is that. Widmog, welcome. Uh, I'm actually running Linux. If that's what you're asking. Uh. Am I still streaming? Yes, I'm still streaming. Let me go check my OBS. Yep, I am. So I'm running Linux. And let's see. App idea. Debate heater. In a Siri, Alexa, etc. app that listens in onto voice emotions level and interjects with phrases. But what about X? Controversial pitches to keep the ball rolling. <laughs> That's a great idea, sir. Sounds like something from Silicon Valley. Yes, yes, it was. Uh, the party got stale. Alexa exclaims, eugenics could work. <laughs> oh, you're so demented, acerbic. Censoring people you don't agree with is very toxic because you can't have freedom when you put chains on some people based on your own personal moral bias against them. Huh, okay. I mean, I'm. you should be welcoming to people, not attacking them. Am I attacking? I hope I'm not attacking. Um uh, if it sounds like I'm attacking people, I've, I've, sorry, that didn't mean to. Maybe we need to start putting up Garbo PHP to make their AI dumb. <laughs> um, embrace, extend, extinguish. Embrace, extend, extinguish. I knew that was going to come up. Uh, there are Google captures on GitLab. Uh, are there now? I didn't know about that shred of piece. Are there? I don't remember seeing those. I do not like a views for training Google's AI, nor do I. Um, I'm sorry, that was that last, I'm going to go back, this was 2210, just let me, let me remember and I'll go back to, or, or come, you said that GitLab chose to be welcoming. Uh, that's what I commented on. Oh, right. Um, I, I don't, you know, that's a, that's a really, really tough topic. And, um, and I, I don't want to make light of it. Um, I, I I don't want to say that they even did the right thing. I'm not I'm not saying they did the right thing. I am saying that they were transparent about it, and that they listened, and they they made a decision based on that. And f quite frankly, this is not a dodge. I I do not have um, enough information on the situation to really think through my position on um, on that whole thing. It's extremely con controversial, and I I. I want to form a better opinion before I share it publicly. I mean, even, I mean, I'm, I tend to think that, um, 
the more the, having been Mormon, <laughs> you know, the more commandments you have, the more space between the commandments there is to figure out a way to break the commandments. Do you know what I mean? Well, I didn't commit adultery. I blah 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 blah. You know, so I'll just I'll just I'll just give up my position on that a little bit. That um, it it you know, I, I'm very very conflicted. I'm very conflicted on that. I think corporations need to be more responsible f to support basic human rights and 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 all that kind of stuff. I believe in that strongly. But but when you're you're dealing with you know people who believe so differently across the board on different things. Um, it's extremely controversial, and it's a much bigger problem. So, the the only thing I'll say about GitLab is I, it's not so much praise for their position as much as it's praise for how they handled it. At least they, you know, they talked about it. The tracking thing when they got called out, they're like, "Oh, that's actually a bad idea." You know, let's fix that. Um, so I don't know. I, I'm sorry for to devolve this into a, a debate. I don't mean it to. Either you have freedom or you don't. It's not that hard. Become free is abandoning control which comes with downsides, but it's worth it. I mean, th this thing, you know, that whole thing came about because of all, you know, because get the, the employees, because, uh, you know, get a, I think, I don't, see, I, look, I'm talking, I'm just completely talking out of the way. I have no idea what I'm talking about. So, look, I'm not, I don't even want to talk about it until I get more research on the topic, because I believe GitHub did something similar. I think they actually stepped their foot down. I don't know for sure. Maybe you all know. Um, but that, this, um, that's an issue. If you choose to be non-welcoming to some people you don't like, uh, that will only cause drama. Right. And that, this, I mean, think about how huge that issue is, right? So, so what, I mean, let's, um, okay, so, so Mark,